City of Troy is 7 to 4 here. Fierceness is 100 to 30. Forever Young is 6 to 1. Ushba de Soro, 10 to 1. Highland Falls, 12 to 1, as is Sierra Leone. It's 14 and bigger. The rest, another one on City of Troy. Will he be able to go the early place in the classics, says Sean Cronin? Uh, he won't have been required to go so far so early since bombing in the Guineas. Your thoughts regard, Sean. Rachel, City of Troy. Dirt horse, question mark. We honestly won't know until he shows up on Saturday in the gate three strides out. Uh, but I feel like you said he's not already. I don't think he is. But he's he not, could be good enough to win. He's not the physical specimen of a dirt horse. Um, his stride, I wouldn't suggest it looked dirty, but... Um, and here's the bit of form that we learn nothing from. I'm but hang on, but we learned something, right? We learned he was up against sprinters from, from the team and he initially broke pretty well it, it, with them and then it looked as though there was a decision made to just, you know, let them, let them go on that little bit faster. But did that give you encouragement that he could break and get to the lead in the Classic? All I saw was he got wheel spin and onto Peter coming out of the gate and if you get wheel spin onto Peter, you're going to fall on your face on dirt. That's my worry. Also, if they really wanted to... While we're on him there moving, talk to me about the action. It looks like a fast ground turf action. So he's not, he's not, there's, there's not grab. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, you really need to, like, grab and, and, and pull. And it's, it's a longer stride than perhaps you would have for a dirt action. No. Right? Um, dirt horses do tend... Good dirt horses do tend to have quite long strides. Um, was reading some stuff, if you believe the, the hokey pokey. He's got just a short, slightly shorter stride than Justify, slightly longer than American Pharaoh. Secretariat obviously had a very, very long stride, but he was arguably better on the turf than the dirt. Um, do, we, do we want, do, like, do you want him just, Beth, do you want him to win? I think it's great for the sport, as it always is, that he's come to run on the dirt in the classic, as the lads and Aiden always tend to bring one or two and just throw them in. If he's good enough to win, yeah, I want him to win. But I, I, would like, I would like everybody to look at this race without the form line of, and I quote, he's the best horse I've ever trained. You take that form line out of this, and we're going, eh, no. He's clearly an exceptional horse. Obviously. Um, I want him to win. A Derby winner winning the Breeders' Cup Classic would be apt, would just, I mean, it, it basically wouldn't get better. It's, that would just be incredible. Um, but it's, then you bring into it price relative, you know, seven to four, two to one, whatever he is. I don't know, I'm happy to sit back and watch. Um, well, what's your feeling, Steve? Yeah, I hope he wins. And because if he does, then it opens up the prospect of more horses doing it. But the fact he's seven to four, I certainly wouldn't be backing him. Yeah. Because I don't know if it, I think it opens up more Aidan O'Brien horses doing it, but he's the he's the one that tries. Um, well, Chemico went. Yeah, he's Chemico the only tries. one that's got them. Yeah, true. Really, hasn't he? Um, I suppose back in the day, because John Gosden did it, but with Ravens Pass, but that was when uh, the yeah. artificial yeah. service. So you're going back to Arkanji's, the last uh, uh, um, European horse to have done it when he was a million to one, but not many horses or. This is the first city of Troy to go there with this sort of profile. If he does it, he's, you've got to put him bang up there, haven't you? Because he's a history maker. But uh, for me, he, it's a fascinating race, and I, I've seen enough seven to four shots beat in my time <laughs> with my money on, so I'm not going to be putting it anything on him this time. OK, fierceness would appear to be the best of the Americans, and you've got Forever Young in there. Mm -hmm. Um, best, best of the Japanese going for it. Fierceness, first of all. Um, well, he's a dirt horse. He has seemingly had a great prep coming in. And the question is, is he? if you, if you uh, pitch Fierceness in there with the best of the Americans that have won this in the past, he would at this stage appear to be a little short of that. Fair enough? Not recent ones. We've sort of had a dearth of good classic horses because a lot of the times the classic generation, which tend to be the better horses, falls away at the end of the season. and. And luckily, this year, with Fierceness and Sierra Leone, who's the dirty horse who's going to close for third, that's Thor Torpedo Anna. This is the VT we watched already previously. It's Travers at Saratoga. Um, we do have two of the classic division horses who have stayed around, basically, because they took a break at the end of the summer, and they're fresh coming into this. The one thing that we learned when Fierceness won the Travers, though, was that 
he finally broke his brilliant race bomb, brilliant race bomb. I mean, he was he was like a Swiss watch. You just knew he was going to win or he was going to absolutely implode. That was his second win on the bounce. He'd won the Jim Dandy prior to that. Todd Pletcher says he's just a bigger, more mature racehorse now. That's why they gave him the break. He's one of the eye catchers, the work watchers in the morning. He's bouncing. He's looking really, really good. He's got to have massive chance here. He can sit up with the pace. So Johnny V from nine should be able to lay off. I'd, I'd suggest best would be two back, two out, just sitting in that second row on the outside. And um, he'll get the jump on the, the closers, the likes of your Sierra Leone, et cetera. I mean, that's another thing to keep in mind. They, the lads and everybody think that City of Troy is an absolute shoe in Why are they running Sierra Leone? Same owners. Um, the last Breeders' Cup Classic here, Nick's Go dominated from the front. We've talked about the turf horse, turf course on the dirt. I mean, you are best positioned right at the four, right? Although I remember coming into that, there were a few dirt races that came, they came from off it, and then Nick's Go went and absolutely blitzed them. But do, do, is City of Troy's best chance to get to the front? And if he, if he doesn't, are you worried? Out of three. Because if he doesn't... That's his only way to win, is to get to the front. There's going to be kickback, right? Otherwise. Yeah, and he's, he's struck me as a horse that will, that will curl up and sulk if he gets struck by kickback. He just, the way when, when I know he came back in and straight away it's my fault that we weren't more impressive when winning the Eclipse, but I did not like City of Troy's attitude when Ryan went and asked him for his run in the Eclipse. I, I didn't like that. that. That didn't work. But we have to remember there's a Aiden's couple. Aiden's just said curl up and sulk, question mark. Go on. <laughs> well, there's one thing to remember. Yeah. He's a world-class brilliant jockey. And I know he's won on dirt in Dubai, and I know he's won on dirt in Japan. Ryan Moore is 0 for 25 on dirt in the US. The last thing I need for him to come out in is a face mask, which he has in the past. If he does that. Um, that's got to be relative to the horses he's ridden on the prices they've gone off. And I've Mendelssohn. Who won last, the UAE Derby? Last then, time he wait, won. Wait, he went to so he ran he ran Kentucky Derby. Yeah, he also ran in the Woodward. He also ran in quite the classic. The last time Moore was on dirt in the states was 2018, which was the year of Mendelssohn, and he was a very good horse, and he still didn't win. It's as if we've been gone forever, but soon it'll feel like we've never been away.